Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Tech goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. You're busy. You expect to say no sometimes. But what you didn't expect was a chance to say yes to a college degree while keeping your life. Indiana Tech is now offering Chicago area students undergraduate and graduate degree opportunities taught online by experienced faculty who care. Learn more at one of the new Indiana Tech enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. I can turn this in early? Sure, whenever you're ready. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that there aren't very many energy programs out there. When I researched all of the various programs recently, there are really only two or three accredited engineering programs. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada originally. I came out here to Indiana Tech uh, to actually go for the energy engineering program because of its uniqueness and its ability to get hands on with the materials I'm going to be using in the future. Well, a few of the things I think that sets Indiana Tech apart is, number one, you have very small classes. Uh, you have very close relationships with your professors. When you have a class of 10 people, it's much easier to get to know the professor and get in contact with him than if you have a class of 30, 40, or 50. You're going to have the same professors for the majority of your classes. You're going to have the same classmates for the majority of your classes. The more practical applications come in all the subsequent energy engineering classes. He transfers in a class that right after they're leaving the classroom and the board is filled with calculus. So in order to understand a lot of these topics, they're going to need to understand the calculus there. Calculus is the study of the, the rate of change, how fast things change. And depending upon whether it's energy engineering, industrial engineering, or whatever, they're going to need to use that and apply that. Professor Romary, um, he stands out to me the most right now because when I first got here, I had to take calculus, Calc 1, Calc 2, and he's the one of the professors that teaches it, and he just really was a very kind and helpful, helpful guy, and he did whatever he could to help us out. He was very funny, always had a way of creatively teaching calculus to us that not a whole lot of people can do. and. I think that and how he did it was all, this is gonna be something that's gonna stick for me for a very long time. The field work that Indiana Tech can provide here is, for example, we have a 10 kilowatt windmill that the students can work with. Uh, we have a geothermal system uh, for a couple of the buildings for Yuteng Su and for Zollner uh, that uses geothermal principles to heat and cool the buildings in the summer and the winter. The PV array system, training system that we have down here in the basement allows us to wire up the panels we have down in the basement to set it up as a off-the-grid system or a battery bank system, which helps us because we can see every component of the system actually intertwining and how they work together with something that may not be easily visible when you're on the job site in, in a career. So definitely my uh, internship at Super Value Incorporated uh, was a very, very beneficial program for me to be in 
It was more based on the process and logistical side of engineering of, the, of my degree, not necessarily the design aspect. It helped me really learn how the most efficient way to do a, to do a task and some of the uh, boundaries that come with trying to make things more efficient. One of the things that we've been very fortunate here at Indiana Tech is that we've had a grant through AEP to help subsidize our students in taking some of the various trips in spring break. Over the last four years, I have taken, along with a couple of other chaperones, I've taken almost a couple of dozen students to a trip to Germany and Switzerland that focused on renewable energy. Uh, we've gone to Iceland last year uh, focusing on geothermal energy and we just recently returned from a trip to Costa Rica. Just last year I went to Iceland with a couple of, of our peers, not even just energy engineers but a couple of other uh, engineering majors went along with us and for me that was the highlight of my of my college time. I mean we learned a lot about like geothermal systems and how they converted to a country of basically like ran just by geothermal and but it wasn't just learning about that it was also learning about their culture as well you know and the past and the history and where they plan to go in their future and all those things combined I think really really kind of defines my experience here in Indiana Tech. You can be the smartest engineer in the world but if you cannot talk to or work with other engineers and non-engineers, it's very hard to get anything done. I try to teach my students that while you may not like writing, it's going to be a part of the job. You have to communicate if you're doing experiments or uh, testing hardware in the lab, you need to write it up so that other people know what you did and the customer may want to know how, what are the results of that test. Something I would remember most about the faculty would be just the one-on-one -on -one aspect of it and how open they are to hearing your problems and concerns and willing to assist you. Uh, India, Indiana Tech, with the class sizes being so small, you really get that one-on-one -on -one talking, uh, everyday type relationship with your advisors and your professors. And having that is key to success, I feel, because being able to communicate with them and actually get your problems and questions across is going to help clarify things for you while you're in, in classes in school, which is going to set you up for success. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Live from the Schaefer Center on the campus of Indiana Tech, we've got a top 25 matchup to kick off the season for both the Warriors and the Wildcats. The number nine ranked Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats taking on the number 24 ranked Indiana Tech Warriors. Live from the Schaefer Center here on SummitCitySports.com. I'm Jaron Matheny. So glad you are with us for this top 25 matchup in the NAIA. The NAIA Hoops Report game of the day. Indiana Wesleyan number nine in the preseason poll nationally in the top 25 against number 24 Indiana Tech 
They come in at number three in their preseason poll in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. Indiana Wesleyan number two in the preseason poll for the Crossroads League. Tech a year ago at Spring Arbor won this game over Indiana Wesleyan by a final score of 61 to 59. But these two teams look different here today. Indiana Wesleyan graduating their top scorer in Seth Maxwell, who averaged more than 15 points per game. He also led them in rebounds, six and a half per contest. But the bigger story coming into this one is the replacing that Indiana Tech has to do here this season. The Warriors averaged 78.4 points per game a year ago. Only 23.7 of those 78.4 points return to the lineup this year. Now, this was a Tech squad that went to the national championship game for NAI men's basketball a season ago, falling to the College of Idaho by two points in the national championship game and claiming a runner-up spot for Coach Albert's side in his seventh year at the helm. On the other side for Indiana Wesleyan, Coach Tonegal, 499 career victories at the helm of the Wildcats, and he's looking for magic number 500 here tonight at the Schaefer Center. So we saw Cornerstone get past Spring Arbor in our first game of the day in this WAC and Crossroads League tournament to kick off the season. Spring Arbor will get Indiana Tech tomorrow at 2 p.m. It'll be Wesleyan taking on Cornerstone at 12 p.m. tomorrow. We'll have that coverage for you here on SummitCitySports.com and the Indiana Tech Athletics YouTube page. That Goff will be on the call for you tomorrow. Let's take a look at the top 25 here inside the preseason poll. The reigning national champions, College of Idaho, garnering all 21 first place votes. After finishing 36 and one a season ago, the Coyotes are number one for this season. Grace comes in at number two, a team that Indiana Wesleyan will see not too long from now. Arizona Christian third. Coach Chris Wright's Langston side is in at the number four spot. Boy, are they scheduled to be really, really good again this year. Georgetown at number five. Montana Tech at number six. Oklahoma Wesleyan's number seven. LSU Shreveport at eight. Wesleyan comes in in the nine spot and Freed Hardeman at 10. Some other teams of note. Uh, Morningside in Iowa, they're the number one team ranked out of the G-Pack coming in at number 13. Huntington University preseason number 14. We saw preseason number 16, Kansas Wesleyan, go down already today at the hands of Dickinson State, which was, yes, an upset. William Penn at number 19. Northwestern, another team out of the G-Pack in Iowa, comes in at number 21. I'll tell you folks right now that if Alex Van Kalsbeek is healthy this season, Northwestern is better than number 21 in the country. And then Tech coming in at number 24. Lords receiving votes. They were the top pick team in the WAC in the preseason poll. They are just outside the top 25. Faulkner receiving votes. They're number 26. Then Lords, Xavier out of Louisiana, and Dort University out of Iowa also receiving votes as we head into the start of the season. And the start of the season underway for some teams, obviously. And uh, we saw Cornerstone and Spring Arbor kick off their year here tonight and now we get to watch two really talented teams and two teams with high expectations coming into this season face off to start here today some new faces for indiana wesleyan and i think the biggest name of them all and if you're a high school basketball fan in the state of indiana you'll know this name because you watched him for a long time uh, coming out of hartford city and blackbird Luke Brown, the junior guard at six foot two, spent a little bit of time at Stetson, spent a little bit of time at Ball State. He can score. He will light up the scoreboard. And it's great to see Luke back here in the state of Indiana uh, playing for Indiana Wesleyan, obviously a, a, a place where they've produced some pretty good talent across the years. On the other side uh, for Indiana Tech, returning Blake Davison, the junior guard out of Fort Wayne and Leo High School has to be a big part of what Tech is going to do this year if they're going to pull off the type of year that they saw a season ago. Indiana Tech went 32-5. and five. Wesleyan went 21-10. and 10. We'll head down to our public address announcer here as we are one minute away from the starting lineups and introductions. We should not have a national anthem here for this game because we had the anthem prior to the cornerstone 
and Spring Arbor matchup. So, so we should be getting straight into basketball. Uh, big thanks to Esau Haynes, who's running our camera here this evening for us. And we'll see who takes the floor for both Indiana Wesleyan and Indiana Tech in this big time matchup to kick off the 2023-24 season. Again, number nine in the preseason for Indiana Tech and number 24, I should say number nine in the preseason for Indiana Wesleyan, number 24 for Indiana Tech uh, as we kick off the 23-24 high school, rather college basketball season. High school basketball is just around the corner as well here in the great state of Indiana. We'll get into the girls basketball year uh, just about two weeks from now and then we'll have boys basketball uh, that day before Thanksgiving kicks off the boys season. Sectional football going on right now as well. And for those of you that are interested in that sort of thing in this area, the big matchup uh, for tonight, Leo and East Noble. Leo leading 21-7 to currently. Let's turn it over to our public address announcer here as we get set for Tech and Wesleyan kicking off the 2023-24 season from the Schaefer Center. Number nine, number 24, Indiana Wesleyan taking on Indiana Tech to open up the 23-24 college basketball and NAI men's basketball season. Congratulations to the Indiana Tech women's basketball team. They went on the road last night at Huntington and picked up an 80-74 victory at Huntington as the Foresters were opening up their new gymnasium last night. So obviously uh, not a fun place to play to open up a year uh, when you're opening a brand new facility on the basketball side of things. Uh, but the Tech women are off to a 1-0 start. And now Childrish and Lewis stand on the Indiana Tech logo at center court. We are underway as the Wildcats start with a basketball. Marcus Ankney, the freshman out of Greenwood. Where's number 30? Again, this is a different looking Wesleyan and Tech side from a year ago, and the first shot's off the mark. 
Indiana Tech with a basketball. For the first time on offense, here's Davison. They'll go to Lewis. Back for Davison, dribbled it off his foot. Loose ball. And a jump ball. Possession to Indiana Tech. 19-25, first half, 11 seconds of the shot clock for the Warriors as they inbound this basketball. They're going to put 20 on the shot clock. Davison inbounds to Brady Titus. Davison with a basketball, screen from Lewis. Davison back out, Titus. Slings it out left, Perez catch and shoot Trey. Rims off, and here come the Wildcats. Quickly down the other way, rejected by Lewis. Oh baby. Smith driving the other side, and Lewis with a big right hand. Smith inbounds left corner, Cleaver. Flips back to the top. Top of the key, here's the grad transfer. Grad student Childress hits the three. Wesleyan on the board, first three to nothing. Nigel Martin in the starting lineup, where's number four? He's got the basketball, catch and shoot. Here is good for two. Now we got a pause in action. Having some issues with our clock here in the early going. Apologize for that. Should be on now. Smith gonna launch from deep and good. So a couple of threes for Indiana Wesleyan here in the early going. Noah Smith, the redshirt senior, and experience on the floor for the Wildcats here in this one early. Davison and a whistle. Foul against Indiana Wesleyan away from the ball. It's Noah Smith who picks up his first personal. Foul on Noah Smith. Cleaver, Buchanan, Smith. All returners who averaged more than 10 points per game a year ago for Indiana Wesleyan. Martin, and around up top, Davison with a touch, midway through the shot clock. Davison, left elbow jumper, short, and right into the hands of Buchanan. He's pushing in transit, Buchanan to the hole, and a late whistle and a foul. will send Buchanan to the free throw line. Let's go back briefly for a moment here to this big time rejection. And that right palm of Javel Lewis on the block. Now two free throws coming for Buchanan. Buchanan's first free throw is good. 12.1 points, 4.3 rebounds per game a season ago for Buchanan. Indiana Tech shot 76% as a team last year at the line. They go two for two to start. Eight to two lead for the Wildcats. Titus on the handoff. Good harassing defense from Iwu early on, and that ball is thrown away. Bring experience out on the floor to start a season. And, and there are some experienced guys for Indiana Tech, certainly, but not the experience necessarily playing together as a unit. Buchanan against Lewis. Pull up, short. Smith after the offensive rebound. Put back was blocked. Now the other way. Titus. Short, offensive rebound for Martin. His putback goes. Nigel Martin for two. 
Up the other side quickly. Ankney missed it. There's a block for Lewis again. Loose ball picked up by Childress and backed out by Cleaver. Shot clock at eight. Buchanan. Hasn't been the softest rim so far here inside the Schaefer Center tonight. Cornerstone and Spring Harbor could tell you about that. Eight to four, Indiana Wesleyan early, and now a foul against the Wildcats. This is coming on number 21, Cleaver this time. He's got one, Smith has one. One team foul on the other side against Tech. Davison drives, hangs in the air, missed it. Loose ball picked out by the freshman Ankney. Up ahead, Smith runs right into Titus. He got the foul, plus the bucket. Wow, an and one free throw coming for Smith. Noah Smith started and played in 30 games a year ago. Missed just one. 78% at the line. On 81 total attempts last year. And one free throw is good. And it's an 11-4 start for Indiana Wesleyan. DJ Moore is on the floor for the first time for the Wildcats. As Smith takes a seat on the bench. 11-4 start for Wesleyan against Tech. Perez jumps off the far side. Martin turns, hoists, and hits. Martin's got all six points for Indiana Tech. Three for three shooting as well. Moore driving. Got Lewis off his feet and a foul against the Warriors. 15-46, first half. That's on Lewis, his first. Javel Lewis out of Lansing, Michigan, the redshirt junior. Lucas Liskey at the scores table for Indiana Tech. First free throw drops for Moore. Lewis comes out. DJ Moore, just five games last season, but he was efficient in his attempts at the line. Five for six last year, two for two to start. Moore taps it out of bounds as some pressure from Indiana Wesleyan in the full court causing issues for Tech early on. Davison out of Leo High School. His brother Jeremy was a part of that national runner-up team a season ago. Liskey looking to go somewhere. Moore all over his back. That ball's jarred loose. Up in the air. That was Mater, actually, who just checked into the game. Buchanan right-handed and good for two. 15 to six, Indiana Wesleyan in front. Good start for number nine in the country. That ball was deflected. No, it was not. It's a backcourt violation against the Warriors. Twenty on the shot clock here for Indiana Wesley and off the deflection and the over and back violation. So Moore and Buchanan alongside Ankney. Cleaver also on the floor with a basketball here, and then Bontrager underneath. Cleaver looking for his first bucket of the year. Left-handed lay-ins good, and Indiana Wesleyan. Up by double digits. Nigel Martin's got all six points. Perez gives up. Davison driving into some traffic, kicks out. Liskey three. That's pure. Six 
17 to nine inside Buchanan just missed the lay-in. Tech looking to push Martin in transit. Good stutter step and another two. Nigel Martin out of Cleveland. He's got eight of the first 11 for Tech. Moore trying to blow past. Cleaver catch and shoot. Too strong. Perez quickly up the floor, and this is how Tech can get you back in a hurry. Davis in three. Yes! Timeout for Indiana Wesleyan. How about this? Number nine, number 24, off to a raucous start here at the Schaefer Center. We'll be back in one minute. SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. 17 to 14, Indiana Wesleyan out in front, but a nice 8-0 spurt here from Indiana Tech and the Warriors Bring it back within three. Jaron Matheny, glad you're with us. SummitCitySports.com and Indiana Tech Athletics here on YouTube. Big thanks to Esau Haynes, who is running our camera here for us tonight. Indiana Wesleyan taking their first timeout. See it reflected on our scoreboard. Five remaining for Iwu and six for Indiana Tech. Well, Blake Davison hits a three and it's one of those things where if Davison, Liskey, you see one go, and all of a sudden, Ole Mo can be on your side in a big way. Wesley in basketball out of the timeout. Freshman Jackson Gold's on the floor for the first time for the Wildcats. Inside, it's DJ Moore with the lay in for two. Full court pressure from Indiana Wesleyan after the made bucket. See if you can disturb Titus and Perez and some of the ball handlers for Tech. It's Martin with a basketball. Davison floats in the air and short. Good defense all around there by Iwu. Cleaver. And travel. Well, 12 53, first half, 1914, Wesley in leading. It's Titus for the basketball. National runner up a year ago here for Indiana Tech. Crew Gibson's on the floor for the first time. He's got the basketball and gives off to Davison. Liskey, Davison, little head fake. Can't leave him too much space. Shot clock at 10. Titus on the drive, blocked from behind. Good defense on the rejection is the freshman goal. Moore gets the screen. Hangs back. It's a three for Childress, which rattles through. Wildcats scored the last five out of the timeout. Perez back out to Davison. Slides into the lane and a foul. A little bit of a late whistle, counts nonetheless and sends Davis into the line for two. Jackson Gold, Gold 
Tag with a personal. His first of his collegiate career. Probably remember your first bucket more than your first foul, but each their own as Davison hits the free throw line. And sinks the first. Javel Lewis back on the floor for Indiana Tech. Cademan Bontrager, the redshirt freshman, is on for Iwu. Davison hits both free throws, 77% at the line last year. And he goes two for two. Noah Smith has also returned to the game. Smith runs the offense. Childress off a screen. Rolls it up, too strong, and rebounded by Perez. Quickly up the floor, so nifty with the handles. Threw one up for Lewis. He goes back up, got blocked, but fouled. And now Lewis to shoot two. The fourth team foul charge to Indiana Wesleyan. Three against Indiana Tech. Two free throws for Lewis. Too strong on the first. Nigel Martin back in. Lewis hits the second free throw. Just under 11 and a half minutes to play in the first half. Wildcats leading by five. And bump there, whistle, foul against Indiana Tech. Foul on Crew Gibson. Crew Gibson, his first. Inbound, Ankney on the drive. Shot clock at 13. Buchanan, good defense here from Tech. Top of the key, Ankney, five to shoot. Buchanan, just before the horn, offensive rebound. Childress slings it inside. Tough finish opportunity there, and Smith somehow comes away with the basketball, did not hit the rim, shot clock now at 10. Ankney dribbles. Hands off right for the flush. Bontrager, big time. Dallas Roberts, the freshman in his first game. And now official timeout. Injured player Perez comes off the floor for Indiana Tech. Hopefully just a stinger. Davison's back at the game. 17 on the shot clock for the Warriors. We'll take another look at that dunk here in just a moment. Martin out for a three from Gibson. Crew Gibson from long range. There's his first collegiate bucket. Buchanan lost the basketball collected by Childress. Screen to the far side. Smith patient. Bontrager blocked. And out of bounds will stay with Indiana Wesleyan. Let's go back to this dunk for Bontrager. Great feed, right-handed slam. And the block on the last possession for Indiana Tech. Inbound, Bontrager lost it, and it is Tech basketball. Here's the rejection on our replay. Good patience. And it's Lewis with a block. 
wet spot on the floor here. We've seen trouble with that so far tonight at the Schaefer Center. Fortunately, we haven't seen anybody slip in one of those spots yet. And as we go under 10 minutes, we had a media timeout. 24 to 20, Wesleyan in front of Indiana Tech. This is Tech Basketball on SummitCitySports.com. Tech goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships. Internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. Indiana Wesleyan on top of Indiana Tech, 24 to 20, 9.51 on the clock here in the first half of play. I'm Jaron Matheny, glad you're with us for SummitCitySports.com. Indiana Tech Athletics here on YouTube as well. Back and forth we go, and two teams inside the top 25 kicking off their year here at the Schaefer Center. It's been a good one, at least so far. Tech basketball out of the media pause. Dallas Roberts, the freshman, in there with another freshman crew, Gibson. And mixing and matching for Coach Albert here early. Roberts, Gibson. Gibson left elbow. Will dump down inside. Lewis right at the bucket. Lays it in for two. Buchanan on the downhill turn. Rejected again. Lewis on the defensive end. Davison the other way. We are tied. And Davison goes down at the end of this play. Not what you want to see if you're an Indiana Tech fan. Let's look at the replay here of this block from Lewis. Rejection from Lewis eventually setting up the lay-in on the other side. Um, but with Davison down, we're going to take a pause here. Just over nine minutes to play in the first half. And out in front are actually tied now. 24-24, number 24, Indiana Tech. And number nine, Indiana Wesleyan will come back right after this. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Good luck, Tammy. See you, David. Things happen. How do you make the unexpected happen? Take the next step with an online degree from Indiana Tech. Start with a visit to one of our two new Chicago area enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. You'll discover a wide range of affordable undergraduate and graduate degrees with flexible class schedules designed to fit your lifestyle and help you earn a degree sooner than you'd expect. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Indiana Tech's leading returning scorer, Blake Davison, being helped off the floor now, and you'll be able to see it as he walks onto your screen. Davison, somewhat of a good sign there that he's putting some pressure on both legs. He grabbed one of his knees when he went down, and obviously... Um, 
you never want to see that. Davison is being helped back to the locker room for Indiana Tech. We're back to action, tied up at 24 here in this top 25 matchup. Screen to the right side, more for Cleaver. That ball poked around. Another Smith back for Cleaver. He slings it, left side, corner three. Ankney comes up short. Roberts looking to push. Inside for Gibson. Stripped free. Smith. Out. Cleaver three. Can't get it to go. Ball tapped around. And then stripped free by Titus. Strong hands underneath for number three. Brady Titus, the sophomore out of Michigan. Nigel Martin scored the first six points for Indiana Tech. He goes to work, pull up, ooh. Nifty moves, just a hair too strong. Smith hangs, pass deflected, there's Martin on the takeaway. Two on two, Martin, and they'll foul him before he can get in transit. 7.59 on the clock here in the first half, and a host of subs. Jackson Gold returns with Nathan Childress, as well as DJ Moore. No changes at this point for Tech. Inbound for Titus. And stripped free. Cleaver. Going against Gibson, uses that left hand to perfection as Wesleyan regains the lead. Quickly though, Tech not messing around. Martin, jumper no good. Ball floats back into Titus. And then picked a free by Gold. Seven and a half, first half. Childress hangs, left-handed finish. Wesleyan back up by four. And a timeout taken by Indiana Tech. We'll wait to see if this is a full or a 30. It is a 30, so we'll keep it right here on SummitCitySports.com. 28-24. Indiana Wesleyan has the lead on Indiana Tech. Here from the Schaefer Center in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I'm Jaron Matheny, glad you are with us. Got a chance to see both these teams last year as the voice of the Jimmies, the University of Jamestown. Of course, these two teams have kind of become known for making their way to Kansas City. And both have aspirations to get back to the Muni once again this year. Tech basketball out of the timeout. Five team fouls against the Wildcats, four against Indiana Tech. Titus gets the inbound. Martin, bounce pass for Gibson. He couldn't quite handle it. It was deflected, the officials say, so no over and back. Shot clock at 10. Martin on the drive. Good job to get to the hole, but couldn't quite pick up the bucket. Buchanan steps back for three. Oh! 7-0 run for Indiana Wesleyan as Javen Buchanan knocks in the tray. And I'll actually call that a two on the floor. Gibson for Titus, and bumped into, there was Titus blocking foul. Called on Cleaver. That's his second personal foul, and we'll send Smith back into the game. No 
Fresh 20 on the shot clock. Perez back into the game. Shot clock at 10. Perez goes to the left. Looking to clear out some space. Perez just goes downhill. Missed that lay-in. Good help from Childress. Put back. Dunk. Lewis, the slam off the offensive board. Into the left corner, head fake. Smith dribbles against Gibson. And nearly lost his balance. Ball taken away anyway. Perez out the other side, stripped free. It'll stay with Indiana Tech. Here's a look back at the big dunk on the putback. Lewis with the return. And Lewis just checked out. Liskey is in. And they'll have to tell Buchanan and Liskey to stop the hand fighting before the ball's even ready for play. Bontrager's in for Buchanan. Four points the difference here in the first half of play and taken away off the inbound. Up the floor, easy lay-in goes for two and good transit opportunity. Bontrager makes the most of it. 32-26, Steel Brassfield at the scores table for the first time for Indiana Tech. Gibson, and there's a reach-in foul on goal. That's foul number seven. Which puts Indiana Tech in the bonus, one and one. Gibson to the free throw line. Out of Floyd Knobs, six foot eight. For the freshman forward, who shoots one and one. Front end is good. One of these places where you gotta make your money, so to speak, at the free throw line. Converting these opportunities may not seem like a lot in the moment, but it shows up at the box score at the end, and it's one for two on this trip. Down to 5-10, open look for Moore. He passes it up, blows by Liskey and lays it in. We'll have one more media timeout coming up before the end of the first half. Next whistle should take us there. Perez, screen right, flips back, Liskey on the head fake. Out, Perez, three, got it. Splash on the three ball for Perez. Four point ball game. Smith off the handoff from Moore. Liskey, good coverage, poked away. Titus comes away with the ball. Up the floor. A lot of contact, and there's the whistle as Nigel Martin works his way to the free throw line. Foul is on Childress, his second. That's the eighth team foul against Indiana Wesleyan. Nigel Martin to the free throw line. Martin spent last year at Santa Fe, playing for the Saints, knocks in his first. Played in 27 games last year, started in four for Santa Fe. Average just under 10 points per game for coming here to Indiana Tech where he is off to the races. 
10 points as Martin hits the second free throw. And we're back to a two point ball game. 34 32. Moore, good patience, floats it inside. That ball was deflected. Brassfield all over the place, and it's off of Iwu. Well, how about that? Steel Brassfield checks in the game out of New Pal and immediately makes an impact. We have not seen Blake Davison return from the locker room at this point. Again, if we get an update, we will make sure to pass it along your way. I know a lot of people will be wanting to hear about that. For the lead, off the mark. Lever on the board. Gold out, Cleaver three, rims off. Liskey with a big time rebound. Just under three and a half to go. Liskey launches. Can't grab the lead here for Indian attack. Buchanan, patience. Goes against Nigel Martin. He'll launch and gets a soft bounce. Buchanan's bucket is good. He's got eight. Brassfield, left wing, curls inside for Martin. Help coming, gold defensively. Liskey driving in. And we've got a foul against Indiana Wesley, and that's team foul number nine. Foul on 35, Bontrager, his first. Bontrager's first, one and one, one, and one. for Liskey. Clock is right, 241 left in the first half. Redshirt junior Lucas Liskey, three points. So far, one and one front end. Can't get it to drop. Wildcats leading by four. Buchanan spins inside, fade away, front iron. And now Perez looking to push. These teams a little bit quicker up and down the floor than our first game, Cornerstone and Spring Arbor. Whiskey to the rim! Raise the roof. Two hand jam. Back to within two. Floater drops in. Gold with a bucket. And Jackson Gold is now into the stat sheet for the first time in his collegiate career. Congratulations to Jackson on his first collegiate bucket. Liskey on the handoff, Strasfield off. Rather Brassfield, excuse me. Right wing, deep three, gold, feeling it. Less than 90 seconds to go here in the first half. Wesleyan's got the last five. Brassfield to Liskey. Liskey spins. Ball was blocked by Bontrager. Gold again. This one too strong. That could have been over the back on Buchanan as Martin fights for the rebound. Coach Albert certainly thought so. Perez throws it up for Liskey. Good defense by Smith. Cleaver dumps out, Bontrager for two. Just great work by Indiana Wesley and up and down the floor here. Lead built back to nine. Titus blocked. Buchanan, hands off, shot clock turned off. 
Wildcats holding for the last shot. Smith looks up, eight seconds to go. Seven and six, Buchanan. It's the screen, Buchanan, Hoyts. Can't hit, Bontrager got it off, but no good. And at the end of the first half of play, Wesleyan with a nine point advantage over Indiana Tech. Number nine leading number 24 by nine points. We'll come back from this halftime break with some stats. We'll look at some other scores across the area, including here in high school football in the state of Indiana as we've hit postseason play. And of course, we'll get you ready for the second half of action as well at the half. 43-34, Indiana Wesleyan leads Indiana Tech. You're watching Tech Basketball here on SummitCitySports.com. Hi, I'm Paxton and I'll be your tour guide today. Behind me we have Pearson Hall. This is one of our freshman dorms on campus. Today I'll be showing you dorm rooms. Come inside. The only way to get into campus is if you have an ID card, so you'll have to like swipe into all the dorms. And then over here, we have an intercom system. So through every dorm, we have these like dial buttons within the dorm rooms and then outside. So say you're visiting somebody, you don't live here, you would dial their room number and then you can actually call their room and they can unlock the doors to the dorm through the intercom system and you can talk to them, they can see you through a camera and they can unlock the doors for you so they don't have to leave the room. It's really nice to have. So right here we just have our main lobby. Um, every floor has a lobby. In, in the lobbies we just have like TVs and stuff. You can watch movies, play video games. You can hang out with friends, do homework, play card games. Um, it's just a nice little hangout area to have. Um, and then right here, this is what we call our RA office. So every single night there will be an RA in the office. They're just there for your needs if you have any issues with like toilets or sinks or anything being clogged. They'll always be in there for your help. Um, if you have questions about anything, you can always come see an RA here. Um, and then over here, we have mailboxes. Every student has a mailbox. They are really small. The only thing they can fit is like card sized items. Throughout campus, you'll see our mail room when you go on your actual tour later on, and that will be in one of our other buildings where you'll receive bigger packages. All right, so here's the laundry room. So in the laundry room, you don't have to save quarters or use quarters. I know it says 25 cents, but it is included with living on campus. And then there's one on every floor and every side of floor, so there's two on every floor in Pearson. So every student has keys to their dorm. And then as you come in, um, you will see our intercom system right here that I talked about in the entranceway. So this is where you would like unlock the door for visitors, talk to them. Um, and then one really nice thing about it is there is a security guard button right there. So if you were to have somebody like calling your room constantly at like 5 o'clock in the morning because some student forgot their keys, you could actually press the security guard button and it will lock them in that little box that we entered to into the dorm. It will lock both the outside doors and the inside doors and call security. So it also has a nice safety measure through within your room. You don't even have to leave your room for that. So it's really nice. And then as we enter in this way, you'll see our, this is the half of our room looks like. So there's this, and then on the other side of the suite, there's a mirrored room that looks exactly like this. Um, the desk, the dressers, and the closets, and all of the drawers and stuff all come with. Um, you can decorate it any way you'd like. And then like mini fridges, TVs, anything like that, you would bring here. And then through here, we have our bathroom. So then as we come into the bathroom, you'll see that this side of the room has their own sink and toilet. And then as you come through, there's one shower shared between the two rooms. And then this side of the room has their own sink and toilet. And then there's the mirrored room right here. So then they share a little common space out there. And then this is the exact same stuff. And it's all the same. Here we have Cal Flush. This is our other freshman dorm on campus. It is across the street from main campus. We'll be showing another freshman dorm, the laundry room, and then the hangout lobby area. Come on in. So same thing as Pearson, um, to get into the dorms, you have to have a swipe card that unlocks and lets you in. All right, and then we have the same intercom system as we do in Pearson, and it runs throughout all of the dorms.
And then in here is the lobby area where all the students hang out. We have like a TV so people can hook up like Xboxes or anything like that, DVD players, you can watch movies. I know RAs put on a bunch of activities down here. They do like movie nights um, with hot chocolate during the winter. We've done, we've done like pumpkin carving and we watch a Halloween movie. Um, and so that's all done down here. And then it's the same thing over here. You can do some studying, you can hang out with friends, you can eat dinner if you want. And like I said, you can hang out with your RA, hang out with your friends, do homework, but follow me to the next part. So same thing as Pearson, every student has keys to their dorm. So when you first walk in, it's different than Pearson where there's no like two mirrored room. It's just one room with two students. The shelves, the desks, the drawers, all of the bed, like the beds and stuff all come with. Um, and then over here, it's the same for Pearson and Calb Flesh. You can control the air condition and the heat for the room, not the entire dorm, which is so nice because then it's between you and your roommate, not through hundreds of people in one building. <laughs> and then as we walk over here, you'll see that the sink is outside of the bathroom, which is so nice because obviously if your roommate's showering, you don't have to worry about not being able to brush your teeth or even use the sink or get a drink of water or anything like that. And then as we walk over here, um, you'll see only two roommates to one bathroom. And then the shelving space. And then instead of Pearson where they have uh, closets, you would have this whole shelving space and hangar area. And then same thing as Pearson, we have the intercom system over here where you can press the security guard button, you can talk to them and then see them through the camera. Cowflush also has mailboxes, they're the same size, they fit card sized items and again if you have any bigger packages we do have a mail room on campus. So then through here this is the laundry room. The difference between Pearson and Cowflush is Cowflush there's only one in the whole building and it's on the first floor whereas Pearson has them on every floor. Um, but it is the same as they are included with living here so you don't have to use quarters. It's free to the students. And that concludes the tour. Thanks for coming with. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to your counselor. Hope to see you around campus. Go Warriors! here at the Schaefer Center in Indiana Tech, Fort Wayne, Indiana, and Dan Klein Court. I'm Jared Matheny, glad you are with us. 43-34, the halftime break. Number nine, Indiana Wesleyan leading number 24, Indiana Tech. Uh, we'll see Spring Arbor take on Indiana Tech tomorrow at 2 p.m. Cornerstone will face off against Indiana Wesleyan at noon tomorrow. And we're kind of waiting uh, with a little bit of uneasiness here inside the Schaefer Center right now. What Tex was just sent out to Indiana Tech, the community here to be put on lockdown. Uh, so we're trying to find out that information and if we get that information, I, I will be sure to, to pass it your way. Um, they just instructed people to stay here inside the Schaefer Center. So, um, Again, we're not exactly sure what's going on at this point in time, but Indiana Tech, a text was sent out to the students here to be put on lockdown and to stay on lockdown. And, and you, you know the feeling that comes with that. And we see some scrambling as well uh, to make sure that all doors in this venue to the Schaefer Center are locked here. So uh, again, we're crossing our fingers that, that nothing major is going on right now. Uh, and we'll try to keep you up to date as best we can with what's going on here. 
but that is the word we're getting right now. Uh, we're lucky here at Summit City Sports to be working with some of the student athletes here at Indiana Tech and our cameraman Esau Haynes who signed up with for those alerts, got that alert and showed it to me right before we came back from break here. So we're it, it, it's very recent. We're still trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Uh, but just so everybody's aware of what's happening here and, and we may enter some sort of delay at the Schaefer Center uh, depending upon what happens. But uh, that's outside what's going on in this game right now. Indiana Wesleyan on top by nine points on Indiana Tech. Leading scores are Childress and Buchanan for the Wildcats with eight points each. Six points for Moore, six points for Bontrager, and six points for Smith. Nigel Martin leads the scoring for Indiana Tech with 10 points. Uh, Davison left this game at about the 10 minute mark. He had seven points in total and we did not see him come back from the locker room after he went out. Uh, obviously, you're crossing your fingers and hoping that it's something that he got up in the air and it just didn't feel right coming back down and it's nothing more severe than that. But obviously, when you see somebody grab their knee, that's when you start to think of other things. Tech went scoreless the, the final 221 of the first half and Wesleyan ends the first half on a 7-0 run in that 221. It was 24-24 when Davison went down with that injury uh, and since then uh, obviously you can do the math just as well as I can. Plus nine for Indiana Wesleyan since Davison has been out of this game. Team stats in total 17 of 36 for Iwu shooting at 47%. Tech 12 of 27, 44%. Uh, six of nine at the free throw line for Indiana Tech, five of five for Indiana Wesleyan. Both teams made four threes in that first half of play. 22 rebounds for Indiana Wesleyan to 15 for Tech. Seven offensive boards to three in favor of the Wildcats. No lead in that first half of play for the Warriors. Wesleyan led the game for 17 minutes and 36 seconds in the first half of play. Again, we may be in a bit of a delay here. Uh, we'll try to keep you updated the best we know as to what's going on. Um, and certainly we hope that this is nothing serious or nothing major happening. Uh, but we also are vehemently aware of this world we live in. It's Indiana Wesleyan on top of Indiana Tech, 43-34 at the break. Lights are off here inside the Schaefer Center right now, as you can see on our YouTube. Um, and again, the Tech students received a mass text that said to, to shelter in place, essentially. So again, we'll keep you updated with what we know uh, and information as it comes our way here at SummitCitySports.com. Uh, but the Schaefer Center right now, more lights continue to go out. So I think we're going to have at least some sort of delay here in the second half. We'll pause, come back after this. This is Indiana Tech men's basketball here on SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Tech goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. busy. You expect to say no sometimes. 
But what you didn't expect was a chance to say yes to a college degree while keeping your life. Indiana Tech is now offering Chicago area students undergraduate and graduate degree opportunities taught online by experienced faculty who care. Learn more at one of the new Indiana Tech enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. I can turn this in early? Sure, whenever you're ready. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that there aren't very many energy programs out there. When I researched all of the various programs recently, there are really only two or three accredited engineering programs. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada originally. I came out here to Indiana Tech uh, to actually go for the energy engineering program because of its uniqueness and its ability to get hands-on with the materials that I'm going to be using in the future. Well, a few of the things I think that sets Indiana Tech apart is, number one, you have very small classes. Uh, you have very close relationships with your professors. When you have a class of 10 people, it's much easier to get to know the professor and get in contact with him than if you have a class of 30, 40, or 50. You're going to have the same professors for the majority of your classes. You're going to have the same classmates for the majority of your classes. The more practical applications come in all the subsequent energy engineering classes. He transfers in a class that right after they're leaving the classroom and the board is filled with calculus. So in order to understand a lot of these topics, they're going to need to understand the calculus there. Calculus is the study of the, the rate of change, how fast things change. And depending upon whether it's energy engineering, industrial engineering, or whatever, they're going to need to use that and apply that. Professor Romary, um, he stands out to me the most right now because when I first got here, I had to take calculus, Calc 1, Calc 2, and he's the one of the professors that teaches it, and he was just really was a very kind and helpful, helpful guy, and he did whatever he could to help us out. He was very funny, always had a way of creatively teaching calculus to us that not a whole lot of people can do. and. I think that and how he did it was all, this is going to be something that's going to stick for me for a very long time. The field work that Indiana Tech can provide here is, for example, we have a 10 kilowatt windmill that the students can work with. Uh, we have a geothermal system uh, for a couple of the buildings for Yuteng Su and for Zollner uh, that uses geothermal principles to heat and cool the buildings in the summer and the winter. The PV array system, training system that we have down here in the basement allows us to wire up the panels we have down in the basement to set it up as an off-the-grid system or a battery bank system, which helps us because we can see every component of the system actually intertwining and how they work together with something that may not be easily visible when you're on the job site in, in a career. So definitely my uh, internship at Super Value Incorporated uh, was a very, very beneficial program for me to be in. It was more based on the process and logistical side of engineering of, the, of my degree, not necessarily the design aspect. It helped me really learn how the most efficient way to do a, to do a task and some of the uh, boundaries that come with trying to make things more efficient. One of the things that we've been very fortunate here at Indiana Tech is that we've had a grant through AEP to help subsidize our students in taking some of the various trips in spring break. Over the last four years, I have taken, along with a couple of other chaperones, I've taken almost a couple of dozen students to a trip to Germany and Switzerland that focused on renewable energy. Uh, we've gone to Iceland last year. Uh, focusing on geothermal energy and we just recently returned from a trip to Costa Rica. Just last year I went to Iceland with a couple of, of our peers, not even just energy engineers but a couple of other uh, engineering majors went along with us and for me that was the highlight of my, of my college time. I mean we learned a lot about like geothermal systems and how they converted to a country of basically I like ran just by geothermal and but it wasn't just learning about that it was also learning about their culture as well you know and the past and the history and where they plan to go in their future and all those things combined I think really really kind of defines my experience here in Indiana Tech. 
You can be the smartest engineer in the world, but if you cannot talk to or work with other engineers and non-engineers, it's very hard to get anything done. I try to teach my students that while you may not like writing, it's going to be a part of the job. You have to communicate if you're doing experiments or uh, testing hardware in the lab. You need to write. All right, we welcome you back here to the Schaefer Center on the campus of Indiana Tech. We've got an update for you. Uh, the Indiana Tech campus is still on a lockdown as of now. We are unsure why. Uh, there is a crime. This is the information I've been given. So I, I'm just trying to lay it out for you as best I can. There was a crime in the area, but they've been told that you can keep, they can keep playing inside the Schaefer Center here with the doors locked. So that's where we're at. That's really all the information that I have, or for that matter, it seems like anybody has at this moment in time. Um, obviously, some people are confused and concerned. I will try my best to give you as much information as we get as we continue throughout the broadcast tonight, uh, and hopefully, we eventually get word on onto what exactly happened. Um, I apologize if I startle any, any of you with uh, that breaking news. And obviously, if you've got family or friends in the area here at Indiana Tech, you certainly start to think about that. But we are going to play here a second half. Um, and we'll have Indiana Wesleyan taking on Indiana Tech. So that's where we stand right now. We'll keep you updated as to what happens. and. Yeah, all we know is that there's some crime in the area. They're going to keep playing here, but with the doors locked as of now. So I'm sure we'll have some sort of update by the end of the night. And we'll keep you best informed, depending upon what information we get. No Blake Davison here for Indiana Tech. And he's actually in street clothes it appears for the Warriors already, so no more Davison tonight. It'll be Dallas Roberts, the freshman out of Louisville, starting the second half. Wildcats basketball to begin the second half of action. A little bit of discussion here with the officials before we get into play. And now we're ready to go. Second half is underway here from the Schaefer Center. Pass deflected and taken away by Perez. So Tech, Roberts, Perez on the floor with Martin, Lewis, and Titus to start the second half. Childress, Ankney, Buchanan, Claver, and Smith out there for Indiana Wesley. And starting five for the Wildcats. That's a Titus three, which goes. Three. Three Titus. Braden Titus sinks it from the outside. Six point ball game as we begin the second half. Top 25 matchup, right corner. Ankney's three is good. As the net got stuck there, they'll blow the whistle just a moment. Ankney three. Makes it a nine point game once again. Tech basketball, Titus filters left for Roberts. Goes inside, pulls up, but missed it. Ball tap free. Buchanan trying to push. Goes inside, floats it over the top, and in for two. Outside, little head fake. Martin drives and finishes, plus the foul. Martin to shoot an and one. Take a look back at it here in our replay. Titus up the floor. Oh, nifty move, kick out. And then looking for the jam and 
getting the two points, but not quite as emphatically as Martin would have hoped. Foul on 42, Nathan Childress. Basket counts. Nathan Childress, the foul. That's his third. The and one is good. First foul of the second half against Danny and Wesleyan. Eight point ball game. Buchanan off to the right for Cleaver. Whistle, and we're headed the other way. That foul was also on Childress, his fourth. And now Childress gonna have to sit for an extended period for the Wildcats. See if Indiana Tech can take advantage of that fact. Javel Lewis slings it inside for Titus, went through his hands, a little too hot to handle. But a good look from Lewis nonetheless. Buchanan, Noah Smith with the basketball here. Ankeny. Off to the right. Cleaver gives back Buchanan. Little jab step. Buchanan pulls up from 15. Clanked it off. Right for Nigel Martin. Man, can he push the floor in a hurry. Pass was deflected out to Titus, inside for Lewis. Spin to the baseline, Lewis goes up and for two. Javel Lewis, Lewis, two points. Six point deficit here for Indiana Tech. Buchanan, a little push off. Good work from Martin to stay in front. Smith drives on Titus, left hand, soft touch, but doesn't go. Lewis ahead to Martin. One on three, Martin attacks. Could have been fouled there. Got to get back. Ankney, left hand scoop, not there. Titus scans the floor, out. Perez, too strong. Collected by Cleaver, and then he's run into. Titus picks up the foul. Seventeen oh five on the clock. Second half. Forty-eight, forty-two. Indiana Wesleyan, number nine and number twenty-four to kick off the season. Not sure there's a better place to be. Buchanan off. Cleaver three. Got it. Big time bucket for Cleaver, who was really quiet in the first half. He's now got seven. For a guy who averaged. 13.3 per game last year. Lewis back to Titus. And now up in the air, Titus fouled. Wesleyan wants a flop. And I think we're just gonna get a ball underneath here instead of free throws. Foul is on Smith, his second. And the Wesleyan bench being told to take a seat. Roberts to inbound. 20 on the shot clock. Work it around the wheel right. And a foul underneath as Lewis was working underneath. Let's see if we can take another look at it. My ball, my eye was attracted to the ball there. Left side of your screen on this replay. There it is. Yep, Lewis being wrapped around. Already the 14th foul on Indiana Wesleyan. Martin, top of the key, head fake from Titus. He dribbles inside, floater goes. Titus up to five points. 51-44. Buchanan hangs, front iron, loose ball. Lewis collects. Coach Albert halts the transition here. 
Titus underneath, going against Smith. He'll pull up, take the jumper, short, Lewis rebound. Goes back up and good. Lewis bucket, draws it back within five for Indian Tech. Again, the Warriors have not led here tonight. Wesleyan's led for more than half the game already. Smith driving, Lewis, late help, couldn't get there. Good for two. And Lewis and Martin bringing a different edge to Indiana Tech. With all those replacements <laughs> had to go through after the national runner-up. Finish a year ago. Perez out. Titus catch and shoot. Trey, he got it. Sinks one through. Brady Titus from long range. Good work to get Titus the catch and shoot tray. We got a timeout on the floor. 14.48 on the clock here in the second half. Indiana Tech not going anywhere. Wesleyan leads by four. We're back right after this. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Good luck, Tammy. See you, David. Things happen. How do you make the unexpected happen? Take the next step with an online degree from Indiana Tech. Start with a visit to one of our two new Chicago area enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. You'll discover a wide range of affordable undergraduate and graduate degrees with flexible class schedules designed to fit your lifestyle and help you earn a degree sooner than you'd expect. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Number nine, Indiana Wesleyan leads number 24, Indiana Tech, 53-49. Just under 15 minutes to play in the second half. I'm Jaron Matheny for SummitCitySports.com. So glad you're along with us for the ride tonight. No Blake Davison for Wesleyan since about the eight minute mark of the first half or for Tech, I should say, but the Warriors have hung in against Wesley and DJ Moore's back on the floor. A couple of changes, including Bontrager back in as well for Indiana Wesleyan. Cleaver gives up right. Buchanan trying to get around Martin. Jumper, good, plus the foul. Buchanan to the spin move. And just a little bit of contact. Let's watch that one again. Second foul on Martin in the second team foul of the second half against Indiana Tech. And one free throw is good. And Buchanan helps Wesleyan go back up by seven. Bounce pass from Perez to Roberts. Handoff for Titus. He's been the hot shooter to start the second half. Roberts catch and shoot Trey. Oh, baby! The freshman from downtown back within four. Buchanan on the handoff. Runner off the mark. Titus there to collect after the tap. Quickly inside, Lewis. Loose ball, Cleaver grabs it. Wildcats out in transit, gold three. Rimmed off, put back Buchanan short. A 
little bit more up and down finally. Titus stripped free by Moore. Loose ball. Lewis was there, missed the lay-in. Buchanan checking to the near side of the floor and a timeout taken by Indiana Wesleyan. It's a 30 second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. For Coach Conigal's side, trying to get a win to start the season, of course. But this one would be a little bit extra special. Coach Tonegal, 499 victories in his career coming into tonight's matchup against Indiana Tech. Win number 500 would make him the fastest coach in NAI history to reach 500. And at just 42 years old, a lot of success for this Indiana Wesleyan program since he took over. They're looking for their fourth national title. And being from this area, always heard about Indiana Wesleyan and NAI basketball growing up, but when Kyle Mangus stepped foot on campus at IWU, the whole program became different. Wildcats basketball. Childress is in the game with four fouls. Layup was short there. Moore tried to rip it free. Titus comes away with it. Loose ball and a foul at midcourt. That'll go against goal. Fifth team foul already on Indiana Wesleyan. And earlier I mentioned free throws. Early in games don't seem like much, and especially in the first half when you're not getting that foul total up. Well, probably where Tech would have liked it to be. As Moore gets the steal, all alone, DJ Moore lays it in. But free throws down the stretch could really be the difference here, especially if Tech can get to the line a whole lot quicker than Wesleyan in the bonus. They're plus three in the team foul department right now are the Warriors. Titus between the two circles for Roberts, and it's a moving screen. An offensive foul against Indiana Tech. It's called on Lewis, his second. Tech fans getting louder on the far side of the floor. Childress. Out for Moore, they were looking at Bontrager for a second. Now Moore drives baseline, hangs out, gold three, off the heel, offensive rebound. Childress head fake, he'll pull up. Too strong, and there's Martin. Nigel Martin, and lost the ball going out the other side. Subs coming in. Some high school football scores from around the area tonight. Snyder leading Anderson 44 to nothing at the end of the third. Warsaw's in front of Carroll 17 to three. Leo and East Noble tied at 28. And Lures leads 14 to 10. That three ball is good. Garrett upsetting Heritage, 20 to six, a final score. Railroaders are moving on to the sectional final and Heritage, their great season comes to a close with just two losses. Perez inside the three point line, pulls up and good for two. Whistle, offensive foul. DJ Moore, his first, sixth team foul, three against Indiana Tech. And now the next foul will put Tech in the bonus. 
Crew Gibson's in the game. As well as Lucas Liskey. Both these teams, quick turnaround. Just a little bit more than about 14 hours after this one. And we'll see. A game between Indiana Wesleyan and Cornerstone. That's off the mark. Apologize, lost our camera here. Welcome you back here to Indiana Tech. We apologize, technical difficulties, not exactly sure what happened. Looked like we got just kicked off the network there, but we should be back and ready to go now. Jaron Matheny, glad to be with you. Esau Haynes running our camera. Yeah. 62-61, Indiana Tech in front of Indiana Wesleyan. Couple of three balls and a timeout forced. And now basketball belongs to Ai Wu. Left wing three and the response for Cleaver. 64-62. Again, we apologize, not exactly sure what happened there as driving inside, there's a foul. They'll send Nigel Martin to the free throw line. And it looked like our camera initially got disconnected and then all of a sudden we were off, so it must have been a bigger network issue. We did just hear though inside the gymnasium that the lockdown has been lifted. Uh, so obviously that is good news and we're glad to hear that as Martin Knocks in the first free throw. So a couple of threes there for Indiana Tech while we were trying to rush back. Titus and Roberts each hit a tray. Now 63-64, Martin free throw number two is good and we are tied at 64. 7.57 a play. Buchanan. There's a screen for Smith. They'll give it back to Bontrager. Cleaver around the corner, drives inside, foul. He was blocked at the end by Martin, but contact beforehand. Brady Titus is third. It'll actually be Brady Titus on the personal foul. Let's look back at it here on our replay. Cleaver turned the corner quickly, and that little, I don't know, they call Titus at the end there for the foul. Cleaver at the line to shoot two. First free throw up and good. So number nine, Indiana Wesleyan leading number 24, Indiana Tech 65-64. Cleaver second free throw. Got them both to go, he's now got 15. Roberts trying to clear out some traffic as this offense could take the lead here. Martin. Step back, jumper, got it. Nigel Martin. Tech has had the lead for a whole 18 seconds here tonight. We're tied up now. Cleaver. Ball loose, and it's Indiana Tech basketball. Yeah. 7.08. Second half, we're tied at 66. Wildcats led by nine at the break. And Tech has done all this in the second half without Davis in their leading returning score. There's the freshman Roberts who gives them the lead. And 
And now after the fact, a whistle. Coach Albert is furious. But it looks like a bench warning has just been given to Indiana Tech. Ooh, it's a technical foul on the Indiana Tech bench, so not even a warning here. It's a technical foul. Somebody must have been on the floor, which was on the opposite side of that made bucket there for Roberts. Cleaver hits the free throw. And Wesleyan will get possession as well. I think Coach Alberts saying just look for the same thing on the other end and I'm sure Indiana Wesleyan just had a quick conversation on the bench to say stay back. Don't touch the floor. One point Indiana Tech lead. Clock is accurate if you're watching live. Buchanan double team. Von Traeger. As Cleaver hands off to Moore. Moore goes against the grain. Foul. And two free throws coming. It's the fifth team foul against Indiana Tech. Lewis commits the personal foul and now is down on the baseline as well. So two starters now have gone out for Indiana Tech on the same side of the floor, nonetheless. Not what you wanted to see here tonight. 68-67. Tech leads Wesleyan with 6.31 to play here in the second half. SummitCitySports.com. Tech goes by many names. Business. Fine art. Forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. Lewis was able to get back to his feet as DJ Moore just hit the first free throw to tie us up at 68, and that gives Wesley in the lead, 69-68, as Moore goes two for two from the line. Roberts against Moore, slings it, left corner, Martin three! Yes, sir! Nigel Martin from long range. Tech up by two, Moore backing up against Gibson. Gibson's done a nice job here tonight. So is Roberts, freshman showing out big for Tech. Buchanan against Martin. Runner dropped in, we're tied again. Martin, little circus shot, got it. Two point advantage for Tech. Cleaver kicks out left, Moore for the lead. Oh baby! Timeout taken by Indiana Wesleyan right afterwards. It's a 30 second break, so we'll keep it right here. Now just two timeouts remaining for Indiana Wesleyan. And 5.30. 
five for Tech. Foul situation currently. 17 fouls on the Wildcats, five on Indiana Tech. Possession arrow in favor of Indiana Tech at this point. Some other scores going on right now. High school football in the state of Indiana tonight. Dwanger, seven minutes left, leading DeKalb, 35-28. Leo's on top of East Noble, 42-35. Columbia City, season is over. They lose to Mississinawa, 31-15. 5-17, second half. Seventy-four, seventy-three, inbounds. Titus is back in the game alongside Perez. Liskey's also in there. Liskey, the basketball handoff for Martin. Poked free by Cleaver. Final five minutes of a doozy so far. Top 25 matchup to kick off the season. Smith dribbles in. Corner, Childress was open, he'll stop, drive all the way to the cup and lay it in. And now a wet spot located on the floor, so they'll stop the clock once again. Roberts was sent towards the scores table, now he holds up. Inbound to Titus. Roberts has had a big first impression here tonight. Eight points, three of five shooting. Titus. Beautiful footwork. Drops in the two. One point ball game, four and a half minutes to play. Take it away. Liskey out the other end with a jam. Tech leads by one. Buchanan has the answer. Back and forth we go. Four minutes remain. And Coach Albert, they just got a quick word from his assistant. Hey, we got five timeouts left still. <laughs> Gibson handoff, Titus. Looking to shake and bake again. Now Gibson turning against Moore. How about the freshman? Perez, six to work. Runner, kiss the glass. Wesley and waste no time. Childress too strong though, as Gibson goes down. And it's the same spot on the floor where we've seen two other Warriors go down. And Gibson's lucky there. You saw the way live that looked. Let's go back on back-to-back -back possessions here for Indiana Tech. Here's the first, Titus with a jumper, and then watch how quickly this all transpires. Moore bringing it up the floor. Liskey reads it perfectly and flushes it with one hand. Tech leading by one and with the basketball. Here's the tightest shifty moves and the step back J. 79, 78, 328 on the clock. Wet spot being wiped up on the floor underneath. Warsaw defeats Carroll 31 17. That is a final, and according to what I'm seeing here, Warsaw did not throw a pass tonight and still won a sectional game. <laughs> Tech basketball leading by one. Titus, a couple of dribbles. He drives underneath the hoop, missed the reverse lay-in. Buchanan trying to push. Good defense from Roberts getting back in transit to help Martin. Cleaver. 
Bounce pass, strip free. Liskey grabs it. We're under three minutes to play here at the Schaefer Center. Number 24, Indiana Tech leads number nine, Indiana Wesleyan by a point. Roberts, too strong. Smith grabs the board, down to 240. Cleaver, step back. No, Liskey's there. Numbers for Indiana Tech. Martin, and a block. Yeah, great call by the official. As Martin and Titus both slip down. Great call by the official there as Cleaver tried to get back, but it started that fall back just a bit too soon. Ankney coming back into the game. Clock officially at 227. Looks like we've wiped most of the wet spots off the floor. Twenty-six seconds on the shot clock for Indiana Tech. And possession belonging to the Warriors. They also have the possession arrow in the event of a jump ball. Two free throws for Martin, but first we got another wet spot. Second game of the day, which isn't abnormal here. Usually men's, women's doubleheader. This feels like the court's been extra slick tonight. Maybe first game of the year and guys sweating a little bit extra, but even that, it just feels like it's been extra slippery here at the Schaefer Center tonight. Two free throws for Nigel Martin, or I should say, Yes, Martin, two free throws. That was the eighth team foul against Indiana Wesleyan. First free throw good for Martin. Martin's second free throw. Got them both. Indiana Tech, largest lead here tonight. It's by three. Ticking towards 2.15 to play. Childress on the handoff. Into the left corner, Smith up fake. Screen set by Buchanan. Cleaver on the drive, back for Buchanan. Shot clock at 10. Smith, three, yes! We are tied. Smith, three ball, 81 all. And under two minutes to go. We knew it would be a good one. Not sure we thought it'd be this good, though. Perez. Martin, top of the key. Pulls up from 18 and hits. Nigel Martin, unreal. He's got 28 in his debut for the Warriors. Childress, foul, plus one. Liskey's first personal. Wesleyan 11 of 11 at the line. Tech 11 of 14. This is Childress, Childress shooting. Grad student. Out of Zionsville. And former Indiana Hoosier. Missed the free throw. Tech basketball tied up at 83. 
again. They've done this all without Davison. So impressive for the Warriors. Perez. Now it's Martin. He's been the hot hand. Nigel Martin. A lot of contact, still kissed it through. Timeout called. And I'm guessing for a wet spot on the floor. And it is once again. How about Nigel Martin? He's absolutely come to play in his first game for the Warriors. Now up to 30 points in his debut. Fifty-five seconds to go. Childress. Handing off. Deep three. Missed it. Titus rebound. Tech has the lead. And about 14 seconds separating shot and game clock. A lot of timeouts remaining here for the Warriors as well. They won't take one. They're going to clear out for Nigel Martin. Help comes, Martin into the corner, Roberts for three, no good. He got his own rebound. Shot clock turned off. Wildcats have to foul. Titus dribbles around, and finally he's fouled. 16.7 on the clock. Roberts got his own offensive rebound. That turned the shot clock off. And now Brady Titus has a chance to potentially ice this game. Brady Titus, Titus played in 34 games a year ago, took just 13 free throws. He was eight of 13. Tonight, three for three. Missed it on the front end of a one and one nonetheless. Timeout, Indiana Wesleyan. 13 seconds to go. That was the ninth team foul against the Wildcats, which means Tech will be in the double bonus from here on out. It's bonus time for Indiana Wesleyan if the Warriors do foul. And going for win 500, Coach Tonegal. And the Wildcats trying to draw up the right play. They trail by two with 13 seconds remaining, officially 12.9 on the clock. Leading scorer is Buchanan with 17. 16 points for Cleaver, 13 for Moore, 12 for Childress and 11 for Smith. Five scorers in double figures tonight for Indiana Wesleyan. But they trail by two here at the Schaefer Center. One timeout remaining for Wesleyan. Five of them for Indiana Tech still. And a two point deficit for the Wildcats. Cleaver is on the floor with Buchanan, Smith, Childress, and Anki. Inbound, and here we go. Buchanan, screen right. Dribbling inside, spins, Buchanan, missed the lay-in, rebound, Titus throws it up the floor, Martin will dunk it after the horn, Indiana Tech has upset number nine, Indiana Wesleyan on opening night, oh my.
Buchanan missed the lay-in. Liskey grabs the rebound. Wildcats were unable to foul. And Titus got it up the floor to our player of the game, Nigel Martin, 30 points tonight in his Tech debut. 11 of 16 from the floor, seven of seven at the free throw line. And it is a final Tech fans and a doozy. 85, 83, Indiana Tech, number 24, victorious over number nine, Indiana Wesleyan. What a gutsy win tonight from the Warriors. And they did it in the entire second half without Blake Davison. And then in addition to that, without another starter, Javel Lewis in the late stages of this game. But Tech prevails and improves to 1-0 with a win for Indiana Tech over Indiana Wesleyan. We'll have coverage of the two games tomorrow here on SummitCitySports.com and the Indiana Tech Athletics YouTube page. Big thanks to Esau Haynes for running our camera here tonight. It's a final. Tech wins on opening night, 85-83 over Indiana Wesleyan.